Happy 2022. This video is about Panther Walk. What is it? Why do we do it? And some ideas on teaching it. It's a walk with exaggerated front strides. That's it. A panther walk is meant to be sort of long and low and reachy and stretchy with flexion in the spine instead of super upright like a Spanish walk. So the whole reason that we train it is because of all the side effects and all the things that we get to build on it, not to have a better panther walk. Horses get more self-confidence when they're in this big, up, very concentrated posture. Shifting weight to the hind end, more stepping under and engagement with the hind legs. Better coordination, more straightness, all of these things that we all want. We can get almost everything just from activities that we do with panther walk, not the panther walk itself. And I know that some of you are thinking, yeah, but I've seen panther walk and it just puts the horses more on the forehand. How does that ever get them to be more off of the forehand? Ah, well, we'll get there. We teach the very basics of panther walk until the horse has it on a temporary default and it will look completely awkward. It might be very one-sided, but the horse is doing some kind of forward walk with some kind of extra stuff with the front legs. Then once we have that, now we can start combining it with other things. Those other things use the formula that I'm sure most of you know already, which is do X while still doing Y. And in this case, Y is going to be the panther walk. So if the horse is in panther walk, and then the X is go down a slope, which I know you all know is my favorite, then suddenly you have the most powerful tool that I know for actually working on the horse's ability to develop more collection, more shifting weight to the hind end, more braking with the front legs, uh, stepping more under, all of those things can start to emerge automatically. Because remember, the point is, we want all of these movements to emerge without us ever telling the horse how to move his body. So all of this is about getting the horse's nervous system to make these choices, because that's the only definition of self-carriage and balance that makes sense. <laughs> if we have to hold a horse, or drive and restrain, if we have to help the horse physically be in a certain position, then it's not balance and it's not self-carriage, it's trainer, rider, human carriage. The hind legs are gonna be way out behind, right? The horse is gonna be really low in the front, really heavy on the forehand, almost always, probably way under vertical, which is totally fine and totally normal. So this is how most horses are gonna start, right? But remember, it's not about the panther walk. It's not about fixing and correcting the panther walk. It's about what that heavy on the forehand, extreme reaching difficult thing, the legs way back there, that's part of why it works because it is a, quote, self-correcting exercise. But we have to do a few things to enable that. 
So once the horse is doing it, this is how we use panther walk. We put it on a temporary default, which means for some period of time when we decide we're going to start working on this, this becomes a thing that we are reinforcing. This becomes a thing the horse really understands. Okay, this is what we're doing now. It's awkward, but that's okay. And the horse is now like, okay, whether you cue it or whether you've just said, hey, horse, for the next three weeks, this is mostly what we're going to do when we're in this particular context. And so the horse just goes, oh, yeah, all right. If we're walking, you're going to want panther walk. Again, not everyone wants the horse to offer it. I do. But a lot of people want to want the horse to wait until they've cued it. So however you train is okay. We want the horse to be treating it almost like a gate, a very awkward artificial gate, but a gate. Like once the horse starts panther walking, he just keeps panther walking. <laughs> we want the horse to be going, this is what we do. This is the thing we do. Uh, there are many ways in which the activity itself actually becomes rewarding for the horse, even though it's difficult and very challenging and effortful, takes coordination, takes strength the horse often doesn't have in the beginning, right? So this is part of why it physically it takes time to build. But, you know, horses love doing things with their front legs, right? Especially if they have had short strides, if they haven't had a big shoulder range of motion lately, uh, or they're not used to being rewarded for slamming a leg down or even pawing, right? And suddenly all of these things are good, but the horse is walking. Uh, it becomes an exercise that itself is rewarding for the horse. So, I mean, we're still using treats because we're asking them to do it as an activity with us, but they, will, they won't be hating every stride. <laughs> and so now the horse is like doing the thing, it's a temporary default. Now we combine it with something else. We say, okay, horse, let's do this. Do X while still doing Y. Panther walk is Y. Let's go down the slope. Now, what happens when the horse is heavy on the forehand, pointing downhill, and reaching a leg out? The horse is now going to be so far on the forehand and pointing downhill that he's going to fall. And there are only a couple ways that horses and humans can really make it down a hill. They're either going to have to use speed to keep catching themselves. They're going to have to keep going a little faster, a little faster, a little faster each time because they're falling down the hill using the speed to catch themselves. Or they have to learn how to do, in a way, <laughs> the activity that's needed for something like Piaf. The horse has to use his front legs to break to push up and back with the front legs, to shift his weight to the hind legs. That's the only way the horse isn't going to fall over once you combine downhill with panther walk. And now you can add my favorite, which my ultimate favorite of any exercise is panther walk down a slope along a fence line while the horse is keeping track of something to the side which means a bend. But again, I'm not telling the horse to bend. It's just that a, a bend is required if the horse is going to solve this issue of he's got to look at me, oh, but we're going forward, right? So if you look at the straightness video, if you look at the self-carriage video, the riding video, you'll see pieces of this. For the energy saver horse, you get a really high intensity activity that will give them some nature's pharmacy and a lot of hard work. If the horse is really not feeling like doing a lot, they often will do very hard work in panther walk because they don't perceive it necessarily as being such a difficult exercise, even though it is. For the horse that's the opposite, that's like the fire-breathing dragon, well now, instead of relying on big movements and speed and crazy legs going everywhere to get their energy, you can use this exercise but looking for a lot of intense coordination. So now the horse that wants to throw his legs all over the place, like our stallion, he, uh, I'm not going to reinforce that. That's not the activity we're doing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have it be panther walk with a lot of challenge. So now he has to focus and be concentrated. He can't just throw his legs all over the place. 
Remember, focus helps drive intrinsic motivation. Focus helps drive nature's pharmacy, and nature's pharmacy, in turn, drives more focus. So you get this kind of beautiful cycle. There is no correct way to teach it. There's no step-by-step. There's no method. I will tell you how I've taught it, and every single person who does this, and I know hundreds that do, they've all taught it a little bit differently, sometimes a lot differently. Sometimes I've taught it very differently to different horses. I don't know if you could actually teach panther walk without using some form of positive reinforcement. You don't have to use a clicker, but some form of a marker signal and a reward, something that allows you to communicate to the horse what the task is, but without putting any pressure on the horse at all. And I mean no physical pressure because we need the horse's movements to be authentic movements, not movements in response to you're tapping on my leg and I need to move it so that you'll stop. So we need the horse to work toward an external target to to really basically move into pressure, not get relief from pressure. If you're not familiar with using food for training, you should definitely learn that first. But you just want to make sure that you know how to deal with problems that might come up if the horse gets frustrated about wanting the food. We get the horse to do something with his front leg and combine it with a walk. That's it. And it doesn't matter what that thing with the front leg is as long as it's forward. So that could be a reach. That could be a strike. It could be pawing. It could even be stomping. The most important thing is that we combine it with walk. The horse is walking, just walking normally. And then we present the target, the foam, something that the horse wants to push his leg into, or he's already learned this is a good thing to bump into, a target made of foam or a pool noodle. You present the target as the horse is walking normally, his leg will bump into it, and you click or give your marker signal. I'm going to say click, but whatever signal you give that says, yes, that thing, that's the thing. Then you give your reward. For most horses who understand targets and signals, again, even if they've only been doing targets and signals and clickers for you know three weeks, they usually figure this out very quickly. Now, it's physically hard to do, which is why it can take some time. But the horse has already learned it. It's just that it's quite challenging to do, which is the point. So we get the horse to know that we want something with the front leg and we don't care what it is. In fact, the more different things the horse does with his front leg, the better because variability. So the horse is walking, we present the target. At first, we present the target and the horse just bumps into it. Now he knows, oh, I see. Okay, you want me to hit the target, hit the target, hit the target with my leg. And then you control that the target is now just a little bit further in front, so there's a little bit more of a reach, right? So he's not bumping into it, now he has to actually reach for it. And you play with that. When you do that, at first, when you present the target, the horse is probably going to have to stop at the same time he's reaching, because he hasn't yet learned to coordinate it as a walk. And that's okay. So the horse might do, well, you will do walk, 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 present the target, the horse stops, reaches, you click. Or stops, paws, you click. Or stops, stomps, you click. As long as the horse was walking right before you click, right? Right before he does the reach. Because it's really important that the horse associates this with walking from the very beginning. It's a thousand times easier if the horse understands that this is part of a walking thing, not a standing leg lift thing. I'll come back to that. Walk, 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 present the target if you need to. Often horses very quickly start getting the idea and they don't need to actually hit the target. 
I try to fade out the target as soon as I can, or at least fade them actually having to make contact with it. So now you do walk, 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 target, reach, click. So the horse will start to try to figure it out. Pretty soon, the horse will realize, especially if in this moment, he understands the game, and this is a, this is a kind of the rare extrinsic game at this point. He's trying to get the treat. The horse will realize that the quickest way to get the click and the treat is by doing the reach. If you present the target or you're cueing it or he just knows, okay, I know, I know I'm getting ready, and then he reaches, often he will still have forward momentum now, and he will still be kind of in a walk. A lot of people get in trouble by trying to get it to be a really good sort of Spanish walk or even a just a low panther walk from the beginning, like first one stride and then a second stride. And they will get stuck. The horse will do one stride, but then he won't do the other stride. The other problem is, which is related, is that if people first teach it as the horse is standing and then does a leg lift to a target, that most horses can learn in about five minutes and they love it and they'll and they can stand there and lift their leg all day long but now turning that into movement becomes really difficult so i normally don't ever teach it as a standing leg lift so if you have a horse that doesn't really care goes what's the point of hitting a target hitting a pool noodle, hitting a piece of foam, you may find that if you just walk with Chase the Bag, not the crazy big way that we normally use it, the horse will go step, 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 oh, I got to catch it, because you click when he stomps on the bag, when he catches the bag. So pretty quickly, the horse can get that, and then you can put that on a cue so that you're not using the bag. I mean, typically when I do something... Uh, or when I've taught something with the bag, I'm only using the bag a few times, and then there's no more bag. <laughs> then I'm just using my little handheld targets. But the horse now already has the idea because you spent a few days working on that. And then all your normal things that you do to associate it with a cue, either a verbal cue or the way you present the target or the way you show the target or whatever. Then once that panther walk is just kind of sort of going, right? The horse kind of understands he's maybe very asymmetrical, right? One leg is perfect. When I say perfect, you know, I don't mean perfect. I mean, just it, it's reaching, it's doing the thing. And the other leg just seems to not be there at all. That's fine too. That's all totally normal. Because as long as you don't get stuck, as long as you're always doing things differently, it's not a problem. It can be really unbalanced, really awkward. Almost always, of course, the hind legs are going to be way out behind. But the goal is that the nervous system will make the choice to start shifting the weight back. But only because we've given it a movement purpose, an authentic, natural movement purpose not a what does the trainer want me to do purpose, which is completely different. And you, of course, see this difference in self-carriage, what people call self-carriage, but which isn't because it's rider carried. Right? So if you have to give reminders to the horse, it's not self-carriage. And it's almost always a myth <laughs> that we can start by drive and restrain and teach the horse and that if we just practice it and rehearse it, you know, he'll get it, and then he, you won't ever need to remind him ever again in the front or the back. He can just carry himself. But that almost never happens. And you see people at the most advanced levels with very advanced horses, and the rider is still balancing the horse between their legs and their hands because the horse doesn't have his own carriage. We can have gear on the horse but we're just not using it in any way to influence the horse's movement. And then once the horse has certain movements, we can cue those movements, but that's very different from having to remind the horse. We never remind the horse to engage the hind end or step more under, ever. Because what would be the point? If we need that kind of movement, it has to come from the horse. It can't come from us trying to get him to move that way. Because if a horse needs a reminder, it means that his nervous system is saying, that's not the best choice right now. And it's not out of laziness. 
It's out of the nervous system doing what nervous systems do. So we need the nervous system to make a different choice, and then we can practice that. But every time the horse is doing it, he's self-organizing it on his own authentically. In the way that we're using the term scientifically self-organization, right, which is different from just organizing the body in response to something. Self-organization means the, the whole body, all of the systems, organized to something that's more complex, something that's greater than the sum of its parts. And we're never using any, there's never a tap of the whip, there's never a driving, and nothing. And you'll see the horse get more and more and more engaged. Now, on a day when the horse is just phoning it in, he might still be doing a really low on the forehand panther walk. No problem, because once you start to uh, add these challenges, then all you have to do is add a few steps down a hill or, or even just on a fence line with a bend if you don't have a hill. If you don't have a hill, I suggest you make a small hill, but you can also do it inside a small space. Because now, if the horse has a default of panther walk, it's going to be very difficult to navigate panther walk around a very small space because there's always a corner. So now the horse has to do the whole thing in a bend. And for that, he's probably going to have to shift his weight back. Uh, another solution that sometimes has worked almost immediately is if the horse, uh, but not everyone can do this, is if the horse that's low in panther walk is actually next to a horse who already is doing a more upright panther walk. He's already developed it. But also what you're getting is you're getting that spine flexion. You're getting that thing that we all want, which is the horse is lifting his back. And as soon as he starts to shift his weight back a little, you're getting elevation of the base of the cervical spine, the thoracic sling lifts, right? The horse is now able to be more agile, all of the things that we want. And we can develop almost all of it out of panther walk. And especially if you combine it with crunches and now you've got transitions. Uh, okay, so have fun. And don't forget to, uh, to check on Instagram because that's right now where most of the community is who's doing this and who is showing so many examples. There are hundreds of accounts showing panther walk examples. Just search hashtag Intrinsen, hashtag panther walk, and you'll see that. Uh, okay, happy new year. Kramer is right in the shot, Kathy. I am, but I'm not getting Nemo. Those critics are cold. You push them off of your shoulders. It'll show you how if you don't know now. For the more you try to fit, you will know because you are.